All right, here's one more example. This is a super famous torque example called the leaning ladder problem. And I wanna walk you through the basics of it and then you'll see lots of variations of this problem. It's super useful. So we have a ladder. The ladder is 400 newtons right over here. It's five meters long. So then that tells us since that's a 53 degree angle that that's four meters and that's three meters and it's leaning against a frictionless wall. So there's no friction up at the point where the uh, ladder contacts the wall, but there is friction on the floor. And we wanna figure out the force that the wall exerts on the floor, which is a normal force, and the total force exerted by the floor on the ladder. And this is tricky until you kinda of know how to manage that. There's two forces the floor exerts on the wall. One is the normal force that's, uh, sorry, the floor exerts on the ladder. One is the normal force. I'm gonna call it Fn floor and one is the frictional force that's keeping that ladder from slipping out to the left and falling down. So there's a static friction force that's acting here to keep the ladder from slipping. And now up at the wall, there's just a normal force because there's no friction. But in general, when we're talking about a contact force, we are talking really about two forces, a normal force that's perpendicular to the surface and then a frictional force that's parallel to the surface. And those two make up some overall force, just like the hinge force in the previous problem. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can solve this. So I have those two forces. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the weight of the ladder, which acts from its center of mass, W. And that's halfway up the ladder. That's gonna be important. And then we have the normal force from the wall. I'll just call it FW. And note there's no, uh, there's no up down force there because the wall's frictionless. So it's just a normal force, which doesn't matter the angle of the ladder. A surface always pushes with a normal force perpendicular to itself. So this is it. There's only a few forces. Let's take our approach now and do sigma F X equals zero, sigma F Y equals zero, and our new equation, sigma torque, is zero. So let's do the sigma fx first. All that tells us is the horizontal forces are in balance, so the force of the wall has to equal the static friction force, and there's nothing we can do there because we don't uh, know either of those two things. Now, the, we can also balance the vertical forces, which means the ups equal the downs, so Fn from the floor has to equal the weight of the ladder, and we actually know the weight of the ladder, which is 400 newtons, so Fn floor is 400 newtons. So we actually did that one. That's good for a change. We got some results out of that. And now let's do our torque equation. And so what this means is the clockwise torques have to equal the counterclockwise torques. And depending on where we put our axis, we can simplify this. I always suggest putting your axis, well, think about what, where it makes sense to put your axis. In this case, the ladder really is kind of pivoting around that point where it contacts the floor. If you picture it falling down, that's like the point, you know, that's going to slip. Um, but also, it's the place where we know the least amount of information because we have two forces there and we don't know what either of them is. So if we actually put our axis, our axis of rotation for our torques there, Remember, forces that act directly at the axis of rotation provide no torques, so these two forces will not be in our equation, and it simplifies what we're going to do. So now we just have two forces. We have the weight that provides a clockwise torque, and we have the wall force that's going to push it the other way and make a counterclockwise torque, and it's just a matter of calculating the torques. Sigma torque equals zero. The reason why I wanted to do this problem with you is my favorite way of calculating torques becomes really, really useful here. One thing I could do is I could figure out the vectors for the weight that, for example, I could say the force of the, force of the wall is really partially along the ladder and partially perpendicular to the ladder and similar for the weight and figure out the angles and calculate F perpendicular and do the torque that way. And I used to do it that way until I started really liking the moment arm line of action. So let's do it using moment arm and line of action and you'll see really how useful that becomes. Let's do the torque from the weight first. I'm gonna draw the line of action in blue for the weight. And remember, that's just the line that extends the force vector all the way down. And then I'm gonna to go to my pivot point and in red, I'm gonna draw my moment arm. And remember, the moment arm is the line from the point of rotation to the line of action perpendicular. So it's just that little thing. Well, just by looking at the bottom, I know that's 1.5 meters because I know the full horizontal distance is three meters. And so the torque 
uh, from the weight is just going to be 400 newtons, which is the force, times the moment arm, which is 1.5 meters, which is um, 600 newton meters, and that's going to be clockwise. Now I'm going to do the torque from the wall. Oh, this was confusing. I used W over there. I'm just going to say um, torque clockwise, which was from, uh, from the weight. Now I'm going to do the counterclockwise torques, which are the ones from the uh, wall. So torque counterclockwise. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw my line of action. I'm going to do it in blue. Here's my line of action. Just the force extended straight out until you're long enough to pass the pivot point. That's my line of action. And now I'm going to draw my um, moment arm, which is the distance from the pivot point perpendicular to the line of action. And you can see that in this case, it's the other dimension, it's four meters. And so the counterclockwise torque is really easy to calculate as well. It's just gonna be the force of the wall times the moment arm, which is four meters, which is not something I can calculate. So now I wanna balance those two torques out. So sigma torque is zero. So 600 Newton meters of clockwise torque equals four meters times force of the wall, which is the counterclockwise torque. And that tells me that the force of the wall is 150 Newtons. Well, if the force of the wall is 150 Newtons, that also tells me that the frictional force is 150 Newtons and I figured everything out. So here's my final answers. One, force of the wall is equal to 150 Newtons. Force of the floor total equals the north, uh, in the x direction, it's going to be the static friction pointing to the right. So 150 newtons I hat plus uh, the normal force of the wall, which is over here, which is 400 newtons in the up direction, or j hat. And that's it. So you could see how this line of action approach really simplifies this, and I encourage you to start using it. We'll practice quite a bit with it. That's it, and uh, I'll give you another one of these to practice. Okay, see you later.